2021 Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye Wide Body Review, Super Duper Sedan. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Who in their right mind needs a 797 horsepower sedan? The answer, really, is no one. And yet, the Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Widebody exists with virtually no limitations for $78,595. That's right, you can walk into your local Dodge dealership and buy the fastest and most powerful four-door on the planet for less than six figures. And we're not trying to disparage it here, this car is absolutely worth every penny. The Reedy isn't just fast, it's very, very, very fast. But this Charger is also solidly comfortable, great looking, and equipped with some good tech. There are a few things to be aware of, like the fact that the Red Eye requires the best rubber money can buy, which you can't get from the factory. And if you want advanced safety and acceptable fuel economy to go with all that speed, you'll have to look elsewhere. But when it comes to raw, unfiltered power, there is nothing else on the market like the Charger Red Eye. Remember when Dodge offered the Charger Hellcat in non-wide body form? Neither do we. The extra thick hips, now standard on all Hellcat-powered chargers, suit the super sedan so perfectly, it's as if the narrow version never existed. And when paired with 20-inch wheels, a revised front end to better cool the engine, and some subtle tweaks in the rear, it's hard to argue that the Hellcat Red Eye isn't the best-looking charger to date. Our test car looks especially cool wearing one of the Red Eye's many good colors, F8 Green. The handsome exterior hue pairs well with optional orange brake calipers, granite wheels, and a few satin black accents as part of the comprehensive customer preferred package, $8,600. The inside of the Charger Red Eye is as nice as it's ever been. Caramel colored Laguna leather covers the seats, black leather with white stitching coats the dash, and suede lines the ceiling and carbon fiber accents adorn the dash, if you order the $1,595 carbon and suede interior package. Our only complaint is that the cabin does feel a bit outdated, especially considering the recently updated Durango Hellcat is much nicer, thanks in part to the new Uconnect infotainment system. But there's still lots to like visually inside of the Charger Red Eye. Who knew the Charger Red Eye could be so comfortable? Even with a supercharged V8 under the hood, the Dodge Charger Red Eye doesn't lose the on-road comfort that makes the sedan family so charming to drive daily. The suspension soaks up bumps and imperfections well, even with 20-inch wheels and thin rubber, the cabin is relatively quiet, until you really hammer the throttle, and there's a decent amount of passenger room. But for as big as the Charger Red Eye is, it's not the most spacious super sedan in the class. The Charger's 38.6 inches of front headroom and 41, 8 inches of front legroom best the Mercedes AMG E63 sedan by just a bit, 37.9, 41.3 inches, but the headroom figure is down slightly compared to the larger BMW M5, 40.7, 41.4 inches. Neither of those vehicles is strictly a red-eye competitor, but it's as close as we can get in terms of form and function. The rear is a bit tighter, the Charger's 36.6 inches of headroom are down on both the BMW and the Mercedes, but 40.1 inches of legroom are better than both. And for your 6-foot tall author, ingress and egress from the second row are a bit tricky due to the tight rear entryway, and the lack of headroom compared to the other two is obvious. One thing the Charger Red Eye does do better than both the BMW or Benz, though, is seat comfort. The big Laguna leather buckets up front are two of the best seats you'll find anywhere, they're extremely soft and form-fitting, and offer modest bolstering for when you do make it to the track. And the rear bench is just as cushy. Dodge's Uconnect infotainment system is still one of our favorite setups. The home screen layout is clean, the graphics are pretty crisp, and it's all relatively easy to operate. Plus, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard, as does Dodge's comprehensive Performance Pages menu screen. Performance Pages gives you access to things like a 0-60 to 60 timer, a quarter-mile timer, G-force meter, braking distance monitor, and more, all located within the infotainment setup and accessible via an SRT button located just below the touchscreen. The timing features in various meters do come in handy on the track, although Performance Pages feels more gimmicky on the road. And it does take a while to load up. Whatever the case, it's a cool option to have. Our only gripe with the Charger's Uconnect setup is that it feels dated after seeing what Dodge's new setup looks like. The new Uconnect 5 system we tested in the Durango Hellcat and Chrysler Pacifica, both with a much crisper 10.1-inch screen, 
has more features and a better layout. Here's hoping that the Charger adopts the same setup in the near future. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.